Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of SEO Lunch. I'm your host, Dan. And SEO Lunch is your look at the latest and greatest in inbound marketing tips, tricks, and more resources to help you and your WordPress-powered website. As you can see today, folks, I am not wearing a new shirt, so I no longer have a tag hanging out from under my sleeve from last week's episode, so no snafu there. (laughs) Um, But we're just going to cut right to the chase. Uh, Last week, we talked about e-commerce, SEO, um, and another real hot-button topic that a lot of people ask about is just generally optimizing your WordPress website. We do have a more fully featured article as well as actually a handy dandy little checklist you can get on our website and I'll link that article in the comments below Um, or you might even be viewing this video from that article where it's also available. Um, But this is going to go through sort of a technical and less technical sort of more plug-in-y way to optimize your WordPress powered website so that the uh, page load speed is much better. But why would you optimize your website? And what is optimization? So, so optimization, if, if you aren't super familiar, is basically just getting your website to load faster. So if I'm viewing it on a mobile phone while driving, or if I am um, just simply viewing it on a desktop via Wi-Fi, I want my page load speed to be a lot faster uh, than it currently is. And there's always room to optimize your website. So if you're saying, Dan, my website is fine as it is, not true. There's always room for improvement. Even our own websites, our own client websites, there's always room for optimization and there's always room for improvement. So why, why is it important to optimize? Well, the statistics are out there, and there's a link in the, uh, the article about this, but the statistics are out there that it takes the, a user 0.1 second, 0.1 second, 0.1 second, 0.1 second, 0.1 second um, on a page load before they think that something's wrong and might go somewhere else. And it's a pretty staggering statistic if you think about it. Um, so you want to make sure your page is loading very, very quickly or as quickly as possible uh, on its requests. So let's kind of go right through this checklist here. Um, so the first thing that you really want to do initially, and this is kind of a not a given, but something you might not even think about, is choosing your host. A lot of people come to us hosting on like a, a GoDaddy or a HostGator or a Bluehost or something like that. Um, what you really want to do is host with another provider that might be a little bit more WordPress centric, something like um, WP Engine or Flywheel. I know with our projects and with some of our sites, we've actually moved our hosting over to Flywheel in some cases and seen a great improvement in page load speed that's actually helped uh, reduce load speed by about 40%. It's it's pretty incredible what just simply selecting a better host will do. So we invite you to check out some of those options. And we have a full article that we also link on our article um, about choosing the right WordPress host for your website. Um, the next kind of most obvious one that we want to go over is optimizing images. Uh, so this is a commonly asked question. One of the biggest resources that you're going to see on a site, whether it be the big banner, slider image, uh, featured images in your posts, images inside your content, there's images everywhere, your logo. Images can be huge. And if they're huge, they're going to really soak up your resources and it's going to take forever for your page to load. And you don't want that. So what do we recommend? Well, we recommend that you keep almost all or all of your images underneath 100 kilobytes. If you have a gigantic photo from your digital SLR camera of like a real estate property or, you know, the picture of the business from the front or whatever it might be, um, and you're concerned about it, there are plenty of tools out there. Again, the article goes into more detail, but we have software like Riot for PC and Mac. We have Image Optum for Mac. We have WP Smush It, which is actually a plugin that you can download for free on the WordPress repository. Uh, That one only minifies images that are under one megabyte. So if you already have images on your WordPress site that are larger than that, it will not work since it uses Yahoo's servers to do it. We recommend minimizing the images before you upload them. Uh, You can actually use the Apple Preview uh, application too, which is a really nice resource uh, to to optimize your images. Um, But it's really, really crucial that you do that before you put them into your site because that's going to really, really cut down on the uh, page cost uh, of your site. Um, The next thing is plugins. Uh, So a lot of people ask, You have, let's say, 50 WordPress plugins on your site or 10 WordPress plugins that you've downloaded, these free plugins. You've been watching our Press This series. You've downloaded plugins. You've been watching SEO Lunch, implementing like WordPress SEO by Yoast, Google Analytics by Yoast. How do plugins fit in? Well, the short answer to that is this. For every plugin you have running, your page load speed is going to go up. There are some that consume more resources than others, and it's usually fairly obvious um, based on what that plugin is doing. Um, but the general rule of thumb is this. If you're using a plugin that you need, great. If you're not using that plugin for anything in particular, make sure it is deactivated. So you go to the plugin section and you can actually click on the check boxes and just click to bulk deactivate the plugins you're not using. Even if they're sitting in your website, if they're deactivated, they're not consuming page load resources. So you don't have to worry about them being there. 
the next thing to do is external scripts. You want to minimize those. So what is an external script, Dan? Well, I'm glad you sort of asked, or at least I hope you asked, because that's what I'm here for. An external script is basically going to be uh, something like any any program or process that you're getting from, pulled from another website. If I embed a video from a YouTube or Vimeo, for example, if you're watching this video right here on our blog post, that's an external script. If you are getting a Twitter feed or a Facebook feed in your sidebar uh, so people can like your content or see you know, a stream of the most recent tweets you've put out, anything that's grabbing from somewhere else, um, Amazon, wherever it may be, if it's taking code from somewhere else and loading it, that's an external script. And quite often those take quite a bit of resource to load. Um, this is sort of the hardest one to cope with because in most cases you need those resources. You really want them, they really help your site. But you definitely wanna minimize those. For example, if you have Facebook and a Twitter feed, you might say, where is most of our business coming from? Maybe you're a venue and most of your business is coming from Facebook likes and Facebook activity. So you might get rid of the Twitter feed. Or maybe it's vice versa. Whatever the case, that's what you want to optimize for. On that note, you want to go back and optimize old content. So what I mean by this is if you have, um, let's say, 15 old blog posts, um, or let's say 100 blog posts to make it more dramatic, those might have big images from the past, and you're going to want to go back and scale those down. You might have other things like scripts on certain posts, like Facebook feeds and Twitter feeds. You want to go back and optimize those. And the best course of attack for this is to actually go to your Google Analytics profile, I hope you have a Google Analytics profile, and you want to uh, track the behavior, so go to the behavior section and track which pages are doing the best. You wanna see maybe the 10 or 15 best blog posts that you have or the best pages that are converting, and you wanna optimize those first or before anything else. And the reason for that is that's where people are landing, that's where people are clicking, you wanna keep them there. And if your bounce rate or your exit rate is high on those pages, you wanna make sure that you're optimizing that content first and foremost before you even optimize new content. All right, so now I want to get a little bit more technical. Uh, so if you're not development oriented, um, you don't have access to your server, stuff like that, you're, you know, your, your FTP, um, this might be a little bit over your head. I know even for me, sometimes it's over my head. I don't profess to be a crazy developer. I'm more SEO and marketing guy, and that's okay. I am going to go over a couple of the things uh, that are typically going to be wrong with your site on a technical level and what you can do to resolve that. Um, one thing you might see when you run a website speed test, uh, and we'll talk about how to do that in a moment, but one thing you might notice when you run that website speed test is that it wants you to minimize your requests for HTTP, CSS, or JavaScript. What this basically means is you want to make sure that you go into your code and you're not duplicating content. So if you have a child theme or if you have a theme, you don't want your child theme to be a copy of your theme plus enhancements to the code. You want it to just tweak and modify the code that it has to. Same thing with JavaScript. You might have crazy, crazy um, JavaScript commands going on and they might be hundreds and hundreds of lines of code, but there might be some other JavaScript command that does all that you wanted to in a more compressed format. So you wanna make sure you're optimizing all of that content as best as you can. And again, this might be news you wanna get just to your developer. Um, I know I look at some of this stuff and my mind explodes. So just a, just a suggestion so you're not confused when you see it on a list of SEO optimization tricks. The other more technical thing is going to be um, the gzip compression. You're gonna see this in a lot of sites that they want you to compress uh, or do a gzip compression. What this essentially means is these are specific functions uh, that you're going to uh, put into your HD access or .ht access file in your file transfer protocol, your FTP, um, to compress some of the data you have in your website and make sure it isn't it isn't like duplicating processes or doing more work than it has to. Um, there's actually code on our in our article that you can click on. Uh, you can copy and paste it, but you want to put it in your HT access file, which is oftentimes hidden. You might have to reveal it uh, since it is a .ht access file. Uh, if you're not comfortable with this, you're going to want to get with your server host um, to see if they can make this change for you. Finally, the last thing we want to talk about is browser, browser caching. Um, if you have a lot of pages that don't have moving content, so content that doesn't change ever, maybe your front page is not going to be changing for a year, you might want to cache that page. So what is caching? Caching is basically taking the content of a page and saying, hey, you know, Jimmy has visited this page, and when he goes to revisit this page, it's not going to have to load the page again. The browser is actually going to remember where he left off, and it's just going to reload that exact page content. So browser caching isn't good if you're going to be making a lot of updates to your front page. For example, if you look at our Slocum Themes homepage, you might notice sometimes that our, our featured theme changes. 
Well, if our feature theme changes and that page is cached, you're not going to be able to see that change if you visited the site previously. So in, not in, in every case, this doesn't work. But if you have a lot of static content, maybe your whole site is static on WordPress. So you have a contact form page, um, an about page, you know, home page, and it doesn't change. Browser caching is perfect. And make sure that that page loads up quickly for people who want to return visit. It's really, really cool stuff, and I recommend using it. Uh, there's a great free plugin called W3 Total Cache that you can download uh, that will help you take care of this. There's a few kind of technical pieces, but it's highly recommended. I mean, so there you have it. There's a whole bunch of tools and tips that you can use in your tool belt. There's even more information in the article, so again, we invite you to read that. There's also a really cool, uh, you can just enter your email in, that, in the form on the article and get a really cool, cute little checklist. So when you're going through your sites, your client sites, if you're a reseller or somebody who develops with WordPress or designs with WordPress, a uh, cute little checklist you can use um, as you go forward and print out to optimize every website that you put online. Uh, to maximize the results of your site and your client's sites as well. If you have any questions, comments, things we missed, uh, things we got wrong, no, we didn't do that, uh, comment below on YouTube or comment below in the article. Either way, it's really welcome. We love to hear your feedback. Guys, we're almost close to 5,500 subscribers, which is nuts. We're still on our quest for 10,000, so please help us out. It's free. Subscribe right over here with the big old red subscribe button on YouTube. We really, really appreciate it. As always, folks, this is brought to you by our wonderful Slocum themes, uh, really clean, fast-running Slocum themes uh, with attention to landing pages, attention to details, and getting your content seen by the web. As always, folks, thank you very much.